Hello, I'm Dr. Rafi Romano. Today I want to present you uh, the ninth uh, movie of the Joy uh, series. And this movie will be um, on the treatment stages, the protocol for lingual treatment. Actually, the treatment is not different, uh, the protocol or the stages are not different from buccal to lingual. But in lingual, it is very important and even essential for the success of the treatment to follow all the protocols. So we will go over all the stages of the lingual treatment, of course the leveling and alignment, the tour control, and then the finishing and detailing. In all of these, uh, we will try to specify for you what wires are suitable for every stage. Now, the lingual treatment stages, if I want to summarize them, the first is the leveling and alignment. Now, in the leveling and alignment, we include rotation control, we include bite opening in case of a deep bite, we include all the alignment feature in order to get a nice arch. Uh, in the second stage, which sometimes, if you have a rectangular slot, like the joy has, you may have some torque control from the beginning together with the leveling and alignment. But in most cases, when torque is needed, you need to do it after you complete all the first stage. So stage number two will be torque control, assuming that stage number one was fully completed. Then in stage number three, we do consolidation and retraction. Imagine that we align the arch, uh, it's an extraction case or a space dentition case. So after the alignment and after the torque, we still have some uh, uh, spaces to close. And this is a special stage because it should be done in a way that we will not lose anything we have gained in the first two stages. And the stage number four will be finishing and detailing. You want to ask why we need finishing and detailing if we have completed three stages in a very good way. Well, the detailing is for everything we humanly skipped or, or did in a um, not in the perfect uh, way. And uh, second is all the features that includes the uh, coordination between upper and lower uh, arches, either uh, in a, a protrusion or retrusion position, either in a vertical uh, closure of uh, the teeth or to do some um, change of the midline and something like uh, that in all the small and finishing and detailing features. Now, uh, we have different arch shapes uh, provided uh, to us by uh, Adenta for all stages in all different wires in nickel titanium, shape memory, in CNA uh, beta titanium and in stainless steel. All of them come uh, in a shape which should fit most of the arches. They are uh, shape number one, two, three and four. Each one of them is more open and more wide but if you don't want to have a large inventory of wires, you can use number two or three, which is the average. And then when and if needed to modify the wire to open it more or to close it. Now, stage number one is the initial alignment, rotation, and also tip control and, and uh, uh, angulation. All these are done with very flexible wires. As you see in the chart, you can use various sizes. Of course, the minimum size is the recommended one, but you can use rectangular or round. And if you use a shape memory wire, then uh, usually the force that applies, applied on the teeth are very, very minimal. And therefore, 
we can start our alignment for, with rectangular wire and get tall control from the beginning. Now what if we need to gain space by moving the cuspids uh, backwards in order to align the front teeth? In that case, it is recommended to stop the alignment with a very, very flexible wire and to move to some more stiff wire like the CNA-016 which uh, gives you uh, not perfect um, uh, or not maximum filling of the slot which is 018 it has some freedom it, but still it allows the cuspid to move more nicely with less tipping distally then we can come back in the second stage we can come back to the leveling and alignment and complete it. It is important to um, uh, see where the bands between cuspid and premolar are located. If you have crowding we, we want to put the band as close as possible to the premolar to allow the teeth to unravel. If you have spaces you want the band, the mushroom band, to bend it more close to the cuspid in order to let the spaces close and still have some uh, ex um, excess of wire. Now, stage number two is the tore control. The tore control is, uh, of course, done in rectangular slot where we want to fill the slot as much as possible. We are in 18 slots, so your wires can be from 1622 to 1725 and sometimes even 1825 depends on the alignment you have. Yeah, as you can see in the uh, illustration, uh, when you don't have the torque completed yet, you may have some difference in height because if one tooth is still protruded and one tooth is retruded, you can see that they are in a wrong uh, incisal, incisal gingival height. So don't um, um, make mistake between uh, leveling which was not completed and torque which is not uh, yet completed. In stage number three, we do the unmass retraction. We have already completed alignment, we control the torque, now we want to make sure we don't lose all the previous two stages. So we must do it on a stiff wire, we must um, make sure that all segments of the uh, arch are perfectly stabilized. This is done, as you can see in this illustration, done with OMCO generation 7 brackets, uh, one of the, probably the first lingual bracket ever, uh, uh, which is nice to see because it's big. And you can see that, uh, first of all, we stabilized all the three segments by figure eight ligature. Then uh, we um, do the bands close to the cuspid in order to avoid space opening. Then we um, prepare the wire and we do some compensation bands in the wire as you um, pro uh, can come back and see in the biomechanical lecture and in the bending wire lecture. Uh, this is done in order to overcome the bowing effect from tilting of the teeth. So after we've done the stabilization with figure eight, the uh, compensation in the wire, we apply force between cuspid and premolar in a very short segment and in that way you avoid all the side effects. Now stage four, which is finishing and detailing, is done uh, first of all with ideal arch wire. Ideal arch wire is an arch wire that is done on the template uh, we have received or on the uh, pictures of the uh, patient arch or preferably on a setup that is done by technicians so we know how the arch should look at the end of treatment. Now, uh, we do the molar inset if the molars are wider, we do the coordination between upper and lower wire, and we do all the detailing finishing needed. At the end, we may need some elastics. These elastics, as you can see, can be in various uh, ways. Uh, to make it more easy, many doctors do all the buttons uh, buckling because it's more easy for patients and we have longer span if you do it uh, buckling instead of lingually. 
so the, the uh, elastic is more stretched and usually this is done not more than uh, three to six weeks just to do final uh, settling of the teeth. So uh, to summarize our treatment principle, first of all we need to create space before we do rotation. This can be done either by stripping or by proclination or by extraction. The second, we have to maintain a proper arch form. This is done by bending the wire according to the patient and not according to some template given by a manufacturer. The third is uh, we want to stabilize the anterior teeth. We don't want to lose the torque. We don't want to uh, let the teeth to be out of control and therefore most of the time I recommend when you complete alignment to do figure eight or metal ligature on each tooth to make sure we stabilize uh, this uh, arch. Number four is minimal arch wire changing. Let every wire do its job and not change every time for a different wire because then you do not know if the previous stage has not been completed because you didn't give enough time or because you uh, reband uh, wires again and again. Number five, we should avoid the boying effect by doing slow move movement on stiff wires. Uh, we have to uh, make sure we have molar control, which means the molars should be in contact. It can sometimes be uh, in the beginning of the treatment that you have some uh, posterior bite opening, but we should make sure that when we finish the treatment, we have a proper molar contact. And number seven will be uh, the finishing bands. All the finishing bands are not meant to overcome stages which we didn't finish. If you didn't finish a stage, go back and finish leveling, finish toe control. The finishing bands are really meant to do small finishing, small in and out, small up and down, gum level. So make sure not to do in the finishing stage all you didn't do in the beginning of the case. Uh, and last, you may need, because we treat adults, and adults come with attrition dentition, with uh, some restoration they've done. Once you place the teeth in a different position, we may need to do some recontouring. This recontouring or reshaping is not meant to overcome a wrong teeth position or an unparalleled teeth position. This is meant just to make sure that the new cusps or the new contact with the uh, cusp uh, of the molars and premolar or the incisal edges of the anterior teeth really fit aesthetically and functionally, functionally the patient uh, occlusion. So in summary, uh, follow the treatment sequence is one of the most important for the success of the treatment. I prefer to do rebond than to do wire bending and get to the finishing stage with all those uh, bands. And number and the last is make sure to coordinate arches. In lingual it's not that simple. Use photos, use plaster models and do arch coordination because occlusion is one of your more, most important factor for the success of every treatment, especially in minimal teeth movement in adults. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in my next uh, videos.